From the largest tree to the tiniest flower, all depend on a highly advanced network of fungi that to most people remain unknown. This network of fungi have been evolving for millions of years and forms one of the most important relationships in our natural world, mycorrhizal symbiosis. The term mycorrhizae literally means fungus root. Mycorrhizal fungi join symbiotically with plants, expanding their root systems by many hundreds of times. This fascinating network of living fungi search out essential nutrients, supplying its plant host with food and water through the entire lifetime of the plant. In exchange, the plant supplies the fungi with glucose. In this illustration, the smaller, thinner structures represent uh, the mycorrhizal hyphae. And you can see how it's extending the plant roots. It's like forming barriers. And these over here, those are the fruiting bodies, toadstools. And those are basically how it reproduces. Um, although this network remains primarily unseen to us, many mushrooms we enjoy eating, such as chanterelles, bolites, and truffles, are the fruiting bodies of these mycorrhizal networks. And I think those are bolites. So, yeah, that would make sense. Um, most plants are critically dependent on this relationship. If you pick up a handful of debris from the forest floor, you'll likely be holding in your hands part of a complex mycelial network. You can see all the threads in there. Those are all hyphae. Um, you can see in this photograph how in only a square inch there can be hundreds of thousands of mycelial threads, all actively working to produce soil and metabolize natural debris. Unfortunately, this is not the case in most developed areas. <clears throat> The process of developing land for commercial and residential use has devastating effects, leaving the ground below, below compacted and virtually void of life. That's basically concrete. Nothing can live in that. In addition to land development, unsustainable agricultural practices are depleting and destroying lands at an alarming rate. Human-induced soil degradation uh, is transforming productive agricultural areas into wastelands at tragic speeds. In 1991, which is sadly the most recent data available, it was estimated that humankind had degraded more than 7.5 million square miles of land. And you can see in this picture that all the developed areas, all the soil is degraded. And, like, around there, it's without vegetation. And, yeah, obviously that's not good. <laughs> yeah. uh, more than 99% of the world's food supply comes from the land. As our usable land is shrinking, our population is growing at an alarming rate. Today, more than 6 billion people rely on food that is grown on just 11% of the global land surface. Of this land, just 3% offers inherently fertile soil. <clears throat> Nearly one-third of the world's cropland has been abandoned during the past 40 years because erosion has made it unproductive. In 2008, <coughs> uh, the U.S. Census Bureau estimated that by the year 2050, more than 9 billion people will inhabit the earth, and to feed this many people, agricultural yields must double. Monocropping, over-tillage, and excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides have been shown beyond a doubt in countless studies to be destructive practices, and it's time now to re return this to sustainability. <laughs> there are many viable solutions to our current soil crisis, and as with rebuilding anything, you have to start from the ground up. Rebuilding a healthy rhizosphere by reintroducing a healthy, healthy population of fungi and other microorganisms, along with planting diverse species of of plants is critical to restoring our soil. To, illu to illustrate how dramatically mycorrhizal fungi can expand a plant can expand a plant plant's root system, look at this photo of a pine tree before and after adding mycorrhizal fungi. The root network extended by hundreds of times, like I said earlier. An article in a Fungi Perfecti magazine a few years back showed results similar to this in a vegetable garden. The article sparked my curiosity about it, so I ordered some 
mycorrhizal fungi and become and started what has now become a four year long science fair project. In controlled indoor environments, I did comparative experiments between plant, plants grown in mycorrhizal fungi and plants grown in chemical fertilizers in optimal soil conditions. The mycorrhizal <coughs> fungi did far better than the fertilizer plants. In fact, the fertilized plants became mutated and did not grow at a consistent <coughs> rate. This led me to repeating the same experiment in depleted soil. Again, the myco groups far exceeded the fertilized groups and the control groups in regards to overall health and productivity. <coughs> the soil itself became more hospitable in the myco group as well with a, loyal, with a lower pH and a better soil structure. Here are some photos of my results from this experiment. <clears throat> you can see that the mycorrhizal group did far better than the others and was the only group to actually produce beans. The root comparison sh chart shows dramatic differences. Yeah, the mycorrhized roots, those are the fertilized roots and they're deformed and dwarfed. While the mycorrhized, group, uh, mycorrhized roots are just amazing. <laughs>